everyone. So good to see you. This is Pastor Donna Hankla with the Big Four PH Church today. And it's been a, been a beautiful week with the fall uh, leaves and just the Christmas of the air. And we've enjoyed some beautiful fall weather. And we're excited today to be with you and just hope that you're excited about the message too. It comes from Proverbs 28, 20, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. Yes, we're going to talk about being faithful because God rewards those faithful people. And I just, I'm so excited you're with us today. I'm praying for you. And we, we want to have a special prayer today. We have one of our members that, uh, one of our members on the YouTube that regularly watches us and supports us that's going through some physical distress and we want to, we're not going to mention their name, but we're going to pray for them. And so, Father, we pray today for this loved one of yours that is so faithful to watch the YouTube and so faithful to study your word and has been through a time of suffering and pain. We ask you to bring healing. You said in Psalms 107, 20, you sent your word and healed them. And we pray for relief of the pain and we pray for healing and just for we agree that, that, that your word, it says in Psalms 107, 20, by your word that brings healing. Your word was sent that they might be healed. Just a beautiful word of God. He sent his word that they might be healed. There's healing in your word, healing in the name of Jesus. And we pray for relief of pain. And Father, we pray for all that need a special touch of the Lord, that need to be encouraged and strengthened and lifted up today. Encourage your people. Anoint this message in Jesus' name. Remind you that we are on YouTube, and the YouTube has been a great way for us to reach people with the gospel. And we are, we're asking you to encourage your friends to, to listen to this. This is We teach God's Word in a way that, that hopefully you can understand, and it will bless you. And there's rewards for uh, for studying God's words and, and learning his word and listening to his word. Invite people to hear God's word so that they can have peace in their hearts, peace in their homes. And we pray that you will uh, remember the YouTube, that you will remember to hit the subscribe button because this does not mean you owe anything. It just means that you hit subscribe, you'll get notifications and that helps us on YouTube. If you give us a thumbs up or comment that shows that you are participating helps us on YouTube. And we also have a giving link on YouTube. Well, with that being said, let's go to the key verse. If you have your Bibles, go with me to Proverbs 28, 20. It says, a faithful man shall abound with blessings, but he that makes haste to be rich shall not be innocent. So it's quite an interesting scripture. Faithful is, uh, what does faithful actually mean? Faithful are those people that in the context of scriptures, it refers to a man or woman that's true to his word. You know, a person says they're going to do it, they'll do it. They say, I'll help you, I'll help you. I'll, I'll do this, I'll do that. They're true to their word. Their word means something. A faithful man makes good his promises. He fulfills his contracts. In regards to ministers, faithful suggests that these people are true ministers of God who preach the gospel. They don't seek to please men. They don't compromise the gospel. Their desire is to please God, and they stand strong during times of opposition. We're going to look at that today in David's life. And most importantly, they give God the glory. So let's look at a, a scripture that relates to this, Psalms 1-3. Faithfulness equals fruitfulness. And Psalms 1-3 says, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he does meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. So we just have a... A picture of, of that, a, a fruitful tree. So faithfulness equals fruitfulness. And you know, God's saying you're going to stand no matter what, even in times of famine, you, or your leave will not wither, but you will prosper. I love it. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. So that that's just a 
a little information about faithfulness and fruitfulness. You know, Moses was a man that was faithful. And we're going to study about other people, David. He obeyed God's instructions. It says in Hebrews 3, 5, Moses verily was faithful in all of his house as a servant for a testimony of the things which were spoken after. He was faithful to lead the children of Israel from Egypt. He led them out of the bondage of Egypt. Out of that bondage, he led them to the promised land. I know you know the story of how God parted the seas. And the important thing about it is Moses was a man that God can count on. You know, God's looking for people he can count on. He's looking for people that will be faithful to him in good times and bad times. People that God can count on. Do you want to be like Moses? Do you want to be a man that God, a woman that God can count on? A faithful person, as Moses was called? Well, let's look at this famous uh, parable in Luke 19. It talks us, teaches us a little bit about being faithful. And I know that you've seen this, the parable of the ten pounds. And Jesus is telling them, in verse 12, A certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds, and he said to them, Occupy till I come. So he is going to go to a far country, this nobleman, and he gives each of his servants different gifts and different talents that they might use them and they might prosper and, and make gain while during his absence. As a matter of fact, he's counting on them to make wise investments and to make gains and to put their talents to use. You know, God's putting, calling you to put your talents to use. He's looking for you in church on Sundays. He's looking for you to be a part of his kingdom and to, to participate and use your talents for him and his glory. And it says he called those ten servants. And um, he says the first one, he says he gave him ten pounds. And when he came back, he, that man says, Well good done, thy good and faithful servant, because I have given you, you've been very faithful in a little, you shall have authority over ten cities. So the one man, he gave ten pounds. And this man invested his money, and he gained, and he gave him more. To whom much is given, much is required. If you're faithful in the least, you're faithful in, in the most. And that we see that concept throughout the Bible. And then to the second one, he gave five pounds. And the second saying, Lord, he has gained five pounds. So the Lord is wanting to see if these people will invest their money. And then do it in a wise way. And here we go. This is a scripture I was reading to you, Luke 16, 12. If you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you your own? He says in verse 10, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. He that is unjust in least is also unjust in much. These men were faithful with the ten talents and the five talents, and they invested their money. They used their talents. Now, I want you to think about yourself today. Are you using your talents for God's kingdom? Are you multiplying? You know, God wants to, to increase you, but we've got to use your talents. Are you using them for God? Using them to advance his kingdom? Are you advancing his church, building up his church? Then the other one, he gave one pound. And and he said, this one, he said, he came and he said, here is your pound, which I kept laid up in a napkin. He did not do anything with his talent. He said, but I feared you because you are an austere man that you take that which you lay up and down and you reap where you did not sow. And he said to him, out of your own mouth will I judge you, you wicked servants. You know that I was an austere man taking up what I laid down and reaping what I did not sow. Wherefore you should have put my money in the bank that at my coming I might have required my own with usury, interest. He said to them, stand by, take him and give the pound and give it to him that has ten pounds. And they said to him, Lord, he has ten pounds. But I say unto you that unto every one which has shall be given, and for him which has not, even that which he has shall be taken away from him. But those of my enemies, which I would not, that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay before me. So Jesus is telling them he expects us to use our talents. He expects us to be faithful with our talents. And 
You know, one man that I want to talk about tonight, tonight that I consider to be extremely faithful is King David. And we're told in um, that David was a man after God's own heart. He's a man that was faithful. He fulfilled. I, I, you'll see this in Acts 13, 22. You know, if you ever study the story of King David, it's a, just an awesome story how he was anointed with oil by Jesse, but it would yet it would be more than 15 years or so before he would become king because Saul would, you know, was, was chasing him and, and so forth. And he was faithful to wait till his time came. But in Acts 13, we see in Acts 13, 36, for David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on asleep, that means he passed away, was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. David fulfilled God's purpose in his life. He didn't give up on God. God could count on him. You know, God wants us to start things and finish things. He told Zerubbabel, your hands have laid this foundation. They shall finish it. Don't give up on God. Continue your walk with God. He's got plans and purposes for you. Be like David. Be faithful and finish the work that God has given you. And we also see in Acts 13, 22, that David is called in that scripture, a man after my own heart. He says, which shall fulfill all my will. This should be our vision, our desires. We think about vision and purpose in our life. It should be to fulfill God's vision and desire that he has from us. And what is that, Donna, you might ask? Well, it often matches the gifts that God has given you. Has he given you the abilities to speak, to pray, to work with computers, to work with art? You know, fulfilling God's will and purpose is the greatest calling ever. And David did that. He was faithful to do that. And what I like about David is he was faithful to God in difficult times and in good times. And in Psalms 3.3, we see a picture of David here. He, is, he says, God is the glory and the lifter on my head. Even in the face of opposition, he is trusting God. He is trusting the Lord to lift him up, to, to defend him, to protect him. And this is just a beautiful picture of that scripture. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. You will see in this context that people are rising up against him, that they are troubling him, they are coming against him. He is facing people that are, that are against him. And he says in this scripture that you, O Lord, are the glory and the lifter of my head. And then he goes on and he says something unusual. He says, I laid down and slept and awakened for the Lord sustained me. He says, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me. Although people were against David and he was facing war, he was able to trust God enough to lay down and sleep and rest, confident that his God would deliver him. And David's qualities of faithfulness or make it, made it possible for him to say this, to pray this. His prayers are awesome if you've ever studied his prayers. David was a faithful man. And David had some visions of God in Psalms 18, really interesting visions of God's greatness. And this is just a, an exciting psalm, really, if you get a chance to study it. He saw God's greatness in his glory. And he, he tells us that, uh, he says, I will call, he says, I will love the Lord, my strength, the Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, and whom I will trust, my butler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. He goes on and he saw God. He says, in my distress, I called on the Lord. He heard me out of his temple. My cry came unto him, even to his ears. And he said, the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hill, hills were moved and shaken. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils and fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. He rode upon a cherub and he did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness as his secret place of his pavilion. Round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice. 
hailstones and coals of fire. He saw an awesome picture of God, a mighty God, a God of the Lord of hosts. And God, as, as you see through this whole scripture, he says that God delivered him and brought him from a, into a large place and delivered me because I delight in you. David saw a vision of God's gracious power and, and an awesome power to deliver him. Now, what I like about David was he fulfilled God's purposes and he faced two obstacles that, that would cause many people to give up on God. One he faced was jealousy, and the other he faced was betrayal. And even our Lord did face the same things. Jealousy did not stop David. And you're going to see this jealousy in 1 Samuel 15, when David had killed Goliath and the women were singing, God has, David has, Saul's killed his thousands and David is ten thousands. And you're going to see, um, Let's just see where we want to go with this. 1 Samuel 15 gives us a picture of this. Okay. We see a picture that Samuel, God rejects Saul in 1 Samuel 15 because Saul has disobeyed him in the um, in, in, a, in a battle situation with Amalekak and Agog, and he did not kill that prophet as he was supposed to. He did not kill that king as he was supposed to, but he let that king, murderous king, live. And we see at the end that Samuel, Samuel said to Saul, bring me this king, Agag. And of course, Samuel killed the king that was so cruel and so merciless to people, killed children and everyone, a murderer. And Samuel went up to Ramoth, and Saul went to his house to give you. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. And the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thy horn with oil, and I will send you to Jesse to find me a king. And he found David. You know, Saul started out so good as a king. He started out doing everything, but then he became rebellious. He became defiant. He disobeyed God. He, he tried to take on roles of the priesthood that he was not even qualified for. He didn't obey God in the battle and in the, in the commands of the sheep and the oxen and the spoil. And so he got his own self in trouble. And David, of course, was anointed king. And David, as you know, killed Goliath. And and it tells us here in the scriptures that David would, after he killed Goliath, that he was so famous in Israel that he would ride through the land and the people, would, the women would shout, Saul has killed his thousands, David has killed his ten thousands. And it tells us that Saul became especially jealous of David during this time. Saul began to see that God had anointed David. He saw anointing of God upon him. He saw, uh, he saw the people accept David. He saw David rise from the really kind of the poverty of a shepherd, sheep keeping the sheep, to defeating Goliath and becoming a great warrior. And instead of rejoicing with David and the fact that he would help him in his kingdom, he did not embrace David. He became jealous of David. Isn't that the way it is in the world? You know, we are out there to help people, and, but yet people tend to become jealous often of us when they see that, that God is blessing us and excelling us. It reminds me of the time of Jacob and Laban. He went to Laban to help Laban um, to the far country. And you know, Laban became jealous. He changed his wages so many times, but yet God blessed him despite the efforts of Laban to cause him to be in poverty. David, uh, late Jacob, would, his cattle would flourish and grow and increase, just no matter how hard Laban tried to, to uh, bring him in poverty. You see, God blesses his people. And Saul had a choice. He could have embraced David. He could have been a mentor to David. He could have Help. He could have, they could have had a friendship. They could have worked together for the nation. But Saul rejected David, and he was jealous. And you know that he chased him throughout the 
land. And as a matter of fact, David knew he was anointed king, but yet he would have to wait about 15 years before he would become king until Saul one day died in battle. But yet David's attitude towards Saul was, was the opposite. He was, he, was, he was willing to wait. He honored the role of the king. He, he gave honor to Saul despite Saul's mistreatment of him. Saul mistreated him, but David, at one time he could have taken his life, and he didn't. So David honored that role, and he waited till his time to become king. David did not give up on God. He remained faithful to God. God counted on him. Jealousy often is a, is a cruel thing, and when we have to face it, it's difficult. But God gives us the strength as he gave David the strength. Uh, jealous is, is a jealous spirit. Is You know, I think that the devil in the beginning, he was prideful. He was jealous of God. Song of Solomon tells us a little description of jealousy. Song of Solomon 8.8 8 says, Set me, 8.6, Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is cruel as death, and jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals there are were coals of fire, which has a most vehement flame. You know, don't become like Saul. Don't let jealousy get the best part of you because Saul, you know, he was separated from God. He was separated from Samuel. That David eventually became king and one of the greatest kings of Israel. The second enemy that David faced was betrayal. And you know, this would be a long story, so I'll just have to kind of cut it short here. You will find this in 2 Samuel 18 and 19, and even in chapter 19, when his son Absalom, over a period of three, four years, began to revolt against David. He was not happy with the way David uh, failed to render justice in a situation where his sister had gotten raped, basically. He didn't agree with David, and he gathered the people to himself, and he revolted against his own father, and he tried to take, he tried to take the uh, kingdom, and he he forced David to flee from Jerusalem, and David cried, and it says he went to the Mount of Olives, and he cried, and we can just take a, you know that was that was betrayal, his own son that he loved, but the question and the thought with this is, don't be an Absalom. Because Absalom met his end. David loved him and supported him, even though he had to run from his own son. But you know what? Absalom tried to cause a revolt in the government. He tried to change things his way and do it his way. Don't be in Absalom. Um, Absalom, you find that story in 2 Samuel 18 to 19. And Absalom gathered the people, and David cried, and he was distressed, and, and it was distressing for him. But one day, Joab and his men were chasing Absalom, and as he was riding through the forest, his hair, long hair, got caught in the trees, and he hung from the tree. And as he did, Joab shot darts at him, and Absalom died. And of course, they told David the message, in the tidings, and David was distressed. He loved his son, but he was distressed. And Joab came to him and told him that the people needed him to, um, the people needed him, were waiting on him, and that he needed, you know, even though he lost his son, Joab said the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people, for the people heard that day how the king was grieved. And the people sat by the gate. And Joab had a little talk with him and told him how important it was for the people and for the nation that he was able to move on and take his role again as king. And David did that. So David overcomes some of the greatest enemies, jealousy and betrayal. Betrayal is a difficult thing and so is jealousy. And we don't understand why people are jealous of us at times or why they would betray us. But what we do understand is like David, is the Lord is the glory and the lifter of my head. And the Lord loves you today, and he loves us. And he wants you to be fruitful. He wants you to be faithful. God wants to count on you. Can you be faithful 
in the good times and in the bad times? Can you bear fruit and be like that tree by the rivers of the water? And most of all, can we be faithful so that God can count on us? Will you use the talents that God has given you? So I, there's a call today for faithfulness, so to be faithful in God's kingdom. And there's rewards for his faithfulness. And remember the faithfulness of David. David was such a faithful man. And you know, David was a man after God's own heart. He was a man that fulfilled God's purpose and vision in his generation. Could it be said of us that we are like that also? Well, I want you to know that I love you in the Lord. And I just want to pray for you today, and I want to thank you for your, um, for your joining us and participating us. I want to also thank uh, Jeff Peace that has supported us, and he's followed the Lord in baptism, and he has been such an encouragement to us, and he is committed to the Lord. And we've seen, seen him and many others rise up and follow God. And Father, we love you today. We love each and every one. Would your hand be upon them to bless them in Jesus' name.